Okay, let's talk measures of center. Um, when we have a data set or we have a bunch of data, a bunch of numbers, um, instead of seeing them as this like mountain of numbers, sometimes it can be helpful to reduce them to a single uh, descriptive number about them. This is sometimes called a summary statistic because it summarizes just like you have a, a giant book and you summarize it with uh, a couple of paragraphs, like what happens in the book. We do the same with a data set and we summarize it with specific numbers. One way we can summarize it is by giving a measure of center. And there's, there's a few of them. We'll look at how to calculate them, uh, which you probably have seen somewhere in your schooling before, uh, but then we'll go a little deeper and, and talk about differences between them. Okay, so I'm going to hide this. Um, so we say we have a set of numbers here. The first thing we, we might want to do is get the mean. And this is often referred to as the average, too. If you just see the word average, they're probably talking about the mean. So to do the mean here, all we need to do is add everything up. Plus 1 plus 1. Um, and then divide by the number of data points there are. So here there's five data points. Uh, so we would have 20 divided by five. In other words, we would have four. So the mean of this data set would be four. Or the, the average of this data set would be four. For median, um, median's simpler, but there's a, a tricky step you have to remember. You have to remember to put the data in order from lowest to highest first, and then you want to grab the middle number. So here we have five numbers. We have a clear middle number being one. So one would be the median. Now, there could be the situation where you have two middle numbers. For example, if there were six numbers, your third and fourth would be right in the middle. You just go halfway in between those, or um, if you want to talk about it mathematically, you take the average of those two. But oftentimes you can just eyeball it to what, what is halfway in between this number and this number. Uh, and that would be your median if there would be an even amount of numbers. But the key step that people often forget is to sort the data first. Mode, we're looking for the most common value uh, or values. So here, what number is showing up more than anything else? The one is showing up more than anything else. So this would be our mode. Now it's possible to have multiple modes. For example, if we added two sevens to this data set, then our modes would be one and seven. Um, it's also informally, mode is kind of a, a high spot. So you might have a, a data set, something like this, where the distribution looked like this. So there were a lot down at the low end and some up here at the high end too. Uh, in that case, this would be a mode. And this would be a mode that the points there on the, the top. So if, if it's the highest point around all of it too, we, we typically call that a mode as well. Uh, but if you're just given a bunch of numbers, whatever occurs most commonly. And if, if nothing occurs um, most commonly, perhaps nothing occurs more than once, uh, you would just say there's no, no mode. So whether or not mode is really a measure of center, it's kind of if he, the mean and the median are typically what we talk about, but mode is a very important concept, uh, regardless of if it's a measure of center or not. Okay, so those are how to calculate them. Um, let's talk a little bit more about what, what they actually represent. So the mean, um, it takes into account every data point, which is good, and that's why we often use this. We often the average or mean is, is our default when we're working with quantitative data and we want to get the measure of center. There's a problem though, and we can see that if we look at the formula, what would happen if one of these points was just really high? So think of this 10 was like 10 million. Well, 10 million would get entered into this sum. And so it would be part of this top of the fraction here, and it would make the mean go way up. Um, and the problem there is then it, it might not really represent the data. So if we were talking, um, for example, salaries and, you know, most people in the room are making uh, $10 an hour, $12 an hour, but then you have someone who's incredibly wealthy, um, multi-billionaire or something, and just pulls the mean way up 
and you get then a measure of center like, okay, well, the average income here is about uh, $300 an hour. And that doesn't really summarize anyone. It certainly doesn't summarize the people making $10 and $12 an hour. And it also probably doesn't summarize the multi-billionaire either. So um, when you have extreme outliers or even skewed data, so you have a lot of uh, data points to one end or the other end, um, then we often go to the median because, let's take a look at this, what would happen if this 10 was 10 million here? Well, we would still put them in the same order. This would still be the highest instead of 10. The median would still be one. In other words, the fact that this number could be 10 million would not, or 10 billion would not impact this number at all. So the median is what we call resistant to outliers or resistant to skew. In other words, it's not easily influenced uh, by these really high or really low values. So that can be good, especially when you're working with financial data which is almost always skewed. Uh, the way financial data works, let's see. Sometimes I had a visual prop in here, but anyway, the way financial data works, it, it often skews to the right. So there's like a tail of like really wealthy or really um, expensive things, whatever that may be. So uh, when you're dealing with data that's skewed or has outliers, you probably want to at least consider the median. Now, the, the trade-off, there is a trade-off. The median doesn't allow you to build on it and do some of the fancier statistical tests, um, like calculate standard deviation or t-tests or no, some of these that we'll get into later in, in the course. So because of that, there's, there's a trade-off. And sometimes people use the mean but then they'll just say, um, you know, do be careful because this data was skewed and we we'll use the mean anyway. So as long as they're acknowledging it, that's, that's at least helpful, I would say. Uh, those are the measures of center. Let me, let me see here. So I think it's useful. Um, typically, I don't think it's useful to know the formulas for stuff as long as you can um, somehow do it with some kind of tool and understand it. Um, I, I do think mean, median, and mode, it's, it's basic enough and it matters enough that you should know. But in general, you're not going to use those formulas. So let me show you, um, here's, here's my running data. Uh, this total RAN is the most important one for this calculation. So here I'm just looking at the amount of miles I ran each week. And if I want to get the mean, instead of adding them all up and dividing by the number, um, I can just use equals average, and then I can just click on C, which will highlight the entire, notice that it's C colon C when I do that, and then end parentheses and enter. So my, my average here is 10.89 miles a week. If I want my median, I do an equal sign again, say I'm going to do a formula, median, um, if you click on that, it automatically gives you the left parentheses, a little bit time saver. Click on the C again, right parentheses, and that gives us 10.9. And then the mode, we type in mode. Um, oh, hey, that's a new feature. Mode multiple. Uh, so here we can see all the modes. If there's one value that occurs, say, 12 times, and that, that's the most any value occurs, but there's another value that also occurs 12, this mode malt. Uh, I'm pretty sure I tried mode yesterday and it didn't have that feature. So woohoo, party time. All right, we put our right parentheses on there and um, get ourselves a few values there. So a few values that have uh, come up regularly. So what do we make of this? Well, notice that the mean and median are almost identical here. And if we would create a histogram, I'm guessing that the data is gonna be fairly symmetrical because when the data is symmetrical, uh, the mean and median will match up really well. It is possible for them to match up without being symmetrical, but uh, it's a lot less likely. So I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna choose, uh, you don't want the bar chart. That's that's the tricky thing here. Here's a histogram. And yeah, look at that. It's, it's actually a pretty close to a normal distribution. And as always, we could change the number of buckets. Um, maybe something that looks like that. 
yeah, I, I think either one there's fine. Maybe bucket size of three miles there. I think that's a nice, uh, gives you the range of the data uh, pretty nicely. So it shows you that, that it is pretty symmetrical. In other words, you have the most in the middle, um, and then it goes out to the tail. Actually, I should say that's a normal distribution. Symmetrical, you could just fold it over on itself and it matches up. Um, so a normal is one type of symmetrical. Either way, we have a pretty symmetrical distribution here, uh, which tells us that either the mean or the median would be fun to use. Now the mode is all over the place. So there's there's been a couple times I've ran 3.2 miles, a couple, these are just the most popular uh, number of miles per week. And you can see that there's not really any clear trend there. So I do want to show you what happens though when when we have an outlier. So let's say this 15.9, let's say I did 159 miles that week. Um, now that shoots the mean up quite a bit, even though the median, the median is probably more representative of how much I'm running per week. That doesn't change at all. And this is also a way that if you know that the data is pretty symmetric uh, and the mean and median should match and they're not matching, that's a sign that you might have some kind of error or mistake here, that somewhere along the line there might be a typo. And if you see the histogram, um, oh, where did, what happened to our histogram? Did we exit out? Let's take a look at what the histogram looks like now. Because I think uh, when you visualize the data, oftentimes you can see you can see where the outliers or mistakes are pretty nicely. And there we have almost all of the data in between zero and 22 miles. And then you have this data point way out here, which tells you that either this is an extreme outlier or it was a mistake. Uh, it's an outlier, definitely. But is it a valid number or a mistake? And then you might say, oh, yeah, um, when I was doing these here, and maybe you even sort it. Maybe you do um, sort Z to A's and then it pops up to the top. Oh, 159. Yeah, that's that's way too high. That was supposed to be 15.9. And then everything goes back to normal. OK, so that's that's measures of center.